back. Today's tutorial is a bolder, more colourful look. We've got some lime green, some teal, some purple. An Instagram follower of mine called this a mermaid look. Thank you very much, lovely. You just named this tutorial. This is going to be a voiceover because some parts are a little bit more technical and I want to pack in as much useful footage as I can for you guys. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and let's get started. Let's start by priming the eyes. My favorite eye primer is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. This is quite an important step for bright eye looks as we want our eyeshadows to be as vibrant as possible. I'm doing a Nikki tutorials on you now, mixing a plum and a violet shade. I'm first circling the brush in the outer portion of the eye. We want most of the depth at the outer corners. Then continue shading the crease, taking that shadow right into the inner corner. This doesn't need to be perfect at this point, we're just creating a purple haze. So continue building until you've obtained the desired depth. Next we're taking a forest green eyeshadow and patting that over the lid, leaving the inner third bare. Again, don't worry about blending the green into the crease, we're going to do that in small, manageable steps. For this step, you can opt for any mint or aqua eyeshadow and pat it over the inner third of the eye, taking it up to the crease and towards the inner tear duct. This next step really makes the look. I'm using a reflective lime green eyeshadow and patting it over the ball of the eye, so right in the middle of the mobile lid. This will act as our central lid highlight and it gives the look a lot of light and dimension. So hold that thought. Let's take a look at a color wheel. Recall that we have greens on the lid and purples in the crease. They're almost on opposite sides of the color wheel, so blending the two might prove a bit challenging. Between green and purple, we have blue. So we're taking a blue shadow through the crease to ease that transition, and suddenly our job becomes much easier. I'm using a small brush to etch the blue shade through the socket, from the outer corner all the way to the bridge of the nose. Our aim is to achieve a very defined socket. Now do a dance, it's imperative for this look. Then dust a flesh colored eyeshadow under the brow so that the purple appears to blend into nothing. Doing things in a strange order today, applying under eye concealer before we shade the lower lash line because if it's done after, it can sharpen up our haze and we want everything to be quite soft. So I'm running the concealer over the lash line so that it also doubles up as a primer. A reflective cream eyeshadow in the center of the lower lash line will really intensify our highlight. We want it to be visible from the moon. Running the violet eyeshadow on the inner and the outer portions of the lash line in what's called sometimes a tulip placement. So essentially you're sandwiching the highlight with darker shades. Back with our awesome lime green eyeshadow, I patted that in the center over the reflective base and this shines like whoa. I decided to add a bit of the forest green on either side of the highlight. I'm just a perfectionist and that step is totally optional. Another perfectionist step, I decided to add a black and purple to the outer corners in a C motion for some extra depth, but again, totally optional. I'm also adding a touch of that reflective cream eyeshadow to the tear duct area, because frankly, I look a little bit sick without some sort of inner corner highlight. We are going to craft a wings liner of medium thickness. I think you guys know the drill. Hello, House of Lashes Pixie Lux. These looked a bit cray and long in person, but they're perfect for photography and shoots. They picture really beautifully. At this point, my eyes start watering and I hope it's the lights and not the duo glue. I'm actually very allergic to bananas, which happen to be in the latex family. Yay. 
lightly touching some mascara on my natural lashes to bind them to the false and coating my lower lashes quite heavily so that they nicely frame that shading. Let's quickly finish off the rest of the face. I'm glossing over the foundation because it's boring and I gave blush a miss because just maybe I have enough color on the eyes, you know? Instead, I went for a contour using my favorite contour powder and my favorite contour brush, which are practically extensions of my limbs at this point. The eyes are sufficiently complex, so back to basics with the lips by layering a nude and a coral lipstick. You get a sort of coral nude. <laughs> And here we have our final look. I hope that you learned something a little bit new today or maybe even just got inspired. If you do enjoy these bolder, more colorful looks, then give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below so that I can do them a little bit more frequently. My YouTuber find of the week this week is Linda Holberg from Banger Beauty. If you don't know who Linda Holberg is, where have you been? She has an incredible blog and an amazing YouTube channel. Her face is beautiful beyond belief and her makeup is so fierce. So definitely go check her out and do tell her that I sent you. I am now off to go visit my grandmother for dinner and I will likely give her the shock of a lifetime. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.